Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome. Today I want to have a conversation around how I healed extreme fatigue. Because let me tell you, it is not fun. So if you are exhausted, if you are tired, if you are fatigued, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here and today we're going to have a really powerful conversation and explore the different areas of physical, emotional, and energetic healing and the steps that I took to heal extreme fatigue. And we'll talk about, you know, kind of what the differences are between fatigue and extreme fatigue because it's one thing to be tired sometimes when you're dealing with extreme fatigue. It is truly such a draining, exhausting thing. And there are often many layers and many different things that are fueling this extreme fatigue. So we're going to dive into all that right away. Just before we do, though, a friendly reminder to subscribe to the channel. Welcome to all of you new subscribers. I'm so excited that you're here. I hope you're getting so much value out of this. There's so much more to come. I'm barely scratching the surface. And make sure you hit the like button and the notification bell so that you get notified when I post new videos and that the like just lets me know that you're watching and you're loving what you're hearing and you're taking something away. So to introduce myself briefly to those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Amber Romanik and I'm an emotional eating digestive and hormone expert with over 10 years experience helping women and men all over the world gain food and body freedom. And what that really means is I help them fully heal binge eating, emotional eating, self-sabotage with food, identify the roots of your hormone and gut issues, build your self-worth, take your power back, identify your weight loss blocks, and a lot more. One of the most common symptoms that most of my clients struggle with is fatigue or extreme fatigue. I went through this as well after I healed binge eating and food addiction, and it took some time to get to the roots of all of the different things that were fueling the extreme fatigue that I was dealing with. So I'm glad that you're here. Let's dive in. Okay, so I think it's so important for us to understand and not normalize fatigue, especially extreme fatigue. I feel like so much of this has been normalized. So first, I'm curious to hear from you. Leave a comment below. Are you experiencing fatigue? And on a scale of one to 10, 10 being really exhausted, one being oh, I feel pretty good, where would you rate your level of fatigue? I know for me, when I was struggling with fatigue, I was probably at like a nine to a 10 out of 10 most of the time when I was dealing with extreme fatigue. Now, this time around when I'm healing adrenal fatigue, it's slowly improving, but it was not as bad as it was 12 years ago when I had just stopped binge eating and self-sabotaging with food. That was just like the exhaustion was extreme. Um, and so when you're in extreme exhaustion, obviously you're gonna feel so tired, you're gonna feel so unmotivated anxiety, brain fog, poor memory, low sex drive, right? You're, you you just feel puffy and you just don't feel inspired and motivated like you normally would. If you had optimal energy, it can really impact your mood, can increase your cravings and your appetite level. We can then reach for those quick fixes like, you know, sugar, caffeine, empty calorie things to try and get an energy surge, but then we have a blood sugar crash and it doesn't really help us out. So what I want to do is I really want to kind of go through the layers of the steps that I took. And obviously I want you to use your discernment and do what feels best for you. If you have questions about anything, leave them in the comments below. Um, and then of course, if you're wanting to further connect, there is a link below to, cl to click to book a 30 minute body freedom consultation. It's complimentary. And here we can talk about your extreme fatigue and any other things I'm gonna touch on today and talk about potentially going on a journey together to help you overcome this extreme fatigue and investigate what's going on in the first place because it does take some investigation before we dive into just like, you know, finding full relief because there's certain things you have to do a little more digging with and certain things you might change right away that are going to make a huge difference. So for me, the first thing that I did, but I didn't realize that I was really exhausted until after I did this, was I had to heal my relationship with food. So if you're binge eating, emotional eating, you're in self-sabotage with food, it's imperative that you get support and or overcome the self-sabotage with food because it is a massive drain. It's exhausting. If you've missed the last two healing adrenal fatigue, part six and five, they're linked below in the healing adrenal fatigue naturally blog. Go and watch them after this because I explain how binge eating fuels adrenal fatigue and how adrenal fatigue fuels binge eating. And you're going to get such an understanding from watching those two videos. So go and watch them after this. It will help fill in a lot of the gap if you're still struggling with any kind of self-sabotage with food. Um, but it's so draining when we're in self-sabotage with food and it's going to just completely push you into quite a heightened state of exhaustion. So healing your relationship with food is important. If you're wondering if you're struggling with binge or emotional eating and you're not sure if you are, 
you can click the link below to take the free emotional eating quiz. Okay, but that was the first thing. So then from there, once I healed my relationship with food, it's like, I'm so exhausted. Oh my gosh, I need answers. So the first thing I did was I got my hormones tested. I got my cortisol tested. I'm actually going to get testing done again this week. I get my tests done every six months. Leave a comment below if you want me to talk to you about my test results in another upcoming video because I'd be happy to do so. I have a feeling my cortisol is probably still going to be high just based off of the last six months. And if you're wondering what that's all about, come and watch the Healing Adrenal Fatigue series. You're going to learn all about that I've been healing adrenal fatigue again after a series of events out of my control. Um, but one step at a time, slowly but surely, things are improving a little bit and going to continue to improve. But I just have an inkling my cortisol still might be high. Anyways, hormone tests are very important as well as vitamin and nutrient deficiencies, mineral deficiencies, because when I first got my hormones tested, my cortisol was too high, my thyroid was hypothyroid underactive, my estrogen was too high, my vitamin B12 was very depleted and there was other things going on that were fueling my exhaustion. When we have iron deficiencies, ferritin deficiencies, vitamin B12 deficiencies, these all really impact our energy levels. So even if you just have one of those deficiencies, you could feel exhausted. Vitamin D deficiency can really impact our mood and our energy levels as well, not let alone the hormone issues. So get those tested. If you want to talk about doing that together, body freedom consultation link is in the description below. So that was a really big eye opener because my cortisol was extreme high. So no wonder I had extreme fatigue because I was at a 2000. It should have been around 350 for where it should be here in Canada with the ranges. So I'm honestly some days still surprised that my body made it through that because that's extreme. I've never seen a level even close to that in my 10 years of practice. So that was a really big deal. So I guess we're kind of looking at the physical causes of fatigue, extreme fatigue first. So the vitamin and mineral, mineral deficiencies, the hormone imbalances, and this was all caused by the self-sabotage with food, which what fueled my self-sabotage with food, feeling insecure in my body, feeling unworthy and not feeling good enough. So I usually find there's a, from an emotional standpoint, there's a self-worth component that we're not fully dealing with or haven't fully dealt with that's then fueling self-sabotaging behaviors with food, restriction, di diets, over-exercising, um, people pleasing, perfection, overbooking our schedules to distract us, or you know, some people don't want to deal with their stuff, so they overbook themselves to avoid dealing with the inner hurts, the inner unworthiness, the insecurities, the wounds, whatever's been going on, you know. And so I'm curious as I just even start sharing this, you know, what's coming up for you? Is any of this resonating for you down below? Because it's not usually as simple as like taking one supplement and then everything is resolved. I think we've been so conditioned into quick fix and there's so much more for us to look at and I really want to to go there with you and to address all these roots and these layers so that you don't feel like you know it's not all in your head if anyone's told you that it's not age you know we shouldn't get more fatigued as we age if things stay in balance in the body I've worked with people from their 20s to their 80s and they've all seen significant improvements with energy and all of these things because we address the roots and that is truly the key so, you know, that's really important to address the hormones, get on the proper supplements, the proper adrenal support, the proper support to bring up your B12, your iron, whatever's going on. However, we need to actually see the numbers to see how mild, moderate, or severe the imbalance is to take the proper action. Because when I was in extreme fatigue, I needed multiple adrenal supports, not just one, right? I needed multiple. I needed support to bring my B12 back up, I needed vitamin D, I needed iron, like there was so many things that I was deficient in and so depleted in from the binge eating and self-sabotage. So it's gonna be different for everybody. Leave a comment below if there's anything that you're taking that's helping improve your energy. I'm curious to hear from you because I know there's different things, but it really depends on the person. Another thing from like a physical standpoint, some easy things you can start with now is making sure you're getting your two plus liters of water a day, ideally filtered water, not tap. I was started adding electrolytes. I started putting pink and gray sea salt on my food. I started adding more minerals and, and having a bath with Epsom salts because we burn through our minerals really fast when we're in extreme exhaustion and adrenal fatigue. And so that really started to help also. And I still to this day do lots of electrolytes, do liquid minerals, um, magnesium, like adding pink and gray sea salt into my food because we just burn through them so fast, especially when we're depleted. So these are things you can start with. And I also really worked on eating regularly through the day, not skipping any meals, adding snacks between my meals to keep my blood sugar regulated. Because like I talked about in the adrenal fatigue vlog, 
adrenal fatigue and low blood sugar when you have adrenal fatigue its best friend symptom is low blood sugar and that can really make you hangry irritable dizzy lightheaded if you if you wait too long to eat and that can make your fatigue worse and your exhaustion worse so eating regularly to keep your blood sugar more stable is extremely important for that um so i really started to focus on you know while i started taking these supplements and adding in like chamomile passion flower tea to help my nervous system um making sure that i was eating regularly through the day. Now, another really important thing is that I really, really, really had to pull back on my movement because my movement routine, my exercise routine, like the worst thing we can do when we're exhausted is wake up first thing in the morning to a blaring alarm. Ideally, if you can help that, try to not, but I know I get it, you know, not everyone can just sleep in or wake up like naturally. But the worst thing we can do for exhaustion is to wake up to a blaring alarm, have coffee, go to the gym on an empty stomach, do an intense cardio workout, and then not eat for a few more hours. Like that will deplete you and tire you out even more. Um, you know, I luckily never really had much caffeine. I, I cut out green tea and matcha because I was doing those things, but I was finding I'd have it feel so overstimulated and then so exhausted. And that was the caffeine component. So white tea, black tea, matcha, and green tea, I cut out. It wasn't a big deal for me. I never did coffee, but I added in a lot of herbal teas and dandy blend, which it, it tastes like coffee, but it's a coffee-free substitute and it's great for your liver. And so I added that in as well. And that was just a nice, you know, substitute for a warm drink because I love having a warm drink. It's part of my morning routine. So caffeine overstimulating made sure I wasn't having any and then um you know I made the personal decision to really to take a break from exercise I still stretched and walked and did gentle yoga but I was so exhausted my workouts were just depleting and emptying my cup like my cup was already empty and it was just depleting things like tenfold a hundredfold more and so as soon as I stopped the exercise and focused on rest and healing my body and my hormones and all these other things I've been talking about my energy started to improve, you know, quite consistently and the weight started to come off and I slept better and my digestion started to function better. So for me personally, that was a sabotage at the time was I was afraid to slow down for fear of gaining weight, but I was gaining weight and exhausted anyway. And as, as soon as I started slowing down, things started to significantly improve. So that was really, really powerful and kind of jaw dropping at the time because I was like, no, I need to exercise to maintain or lose weight, but I was gaining because my hormones were such a mess. When your hormones are extremely out of balance, doing intense exercise five plus days a week is not going to help anything improve. It honestly doesn't. I, I've seen it enough times. I've seen enough proof through myself and all the women that I've helped that it just honestly usually makes everything worse. And if your cycle's disappearing, we'll do a whole, you know, section on that kind of thing. But if that's happening or your digestion's getting more sensitive, you're getting more puffy and bloated, et cetera, like it's important for us to understand how overstimulating the body will keep depleting our energy, keep us in exhaustion and also fuel all the other things that we don't want just not fun um so tell me does this resonate for any of you have any of you taken a break and noticed your energy gets better or do you take a break and then notice your energy gets worse and here's a telltale sign that your workouts are contributing to more exhaustion and adrenal fatigue like okay maybe you're a bit tired after your workout that's normal but we should either be energized or feel, you know, pretty steady energy, um, maybe a bit of an energy lull after our workout, but it shouldn't last very long. So if you do your workout and then your energy crashes significantly after and it stays in that low for hours or the rest of the day, that is a sign that your movement may, may be too intense or may not be in alignment for your state of energy and your hormones right now. And it's worth considering taking a pause food for thought, but something to think about if that triggers you, we're going to do a whole series on body image, self-worth, like guilt and fear around, you know, slowing down and, and resting and balancing the body. Like this is something that's really important for us to consider. Okay. So sleep was another thing that I really, really focused on. And for a while I was waking in the middle of the night, there was that blood sugar, just like I've had now, but fingers crossed, it seems like it's resolving, which is good. Um, but I really focused on sleep, going to bed early, sleeping as much as I could, napping, especially on the weekends. I'm in a nap phase again now. Um, you know, I think that the rest is so important. Rest is going to be one of the, like, I want to say fastest, but most 
productive ways to regain your energy, replenish, and balance your hormones. So getting to bed before 11 p.m., like we're in bed by 9 p.m. almost every night, right? I wake up naturally, it just seems like once it gets bright enough outside. Right now, I'm probably getting nine to 10 hours of sleep a night because I need it to rest and repair. And after the, the weeks of being awake for two hours in the night, I really need that nine to 10 hours. Um, so, and if you wanna hear more about that waking in the night and the blood sugar, go and check out the healing adrenal fatigue. That was, I think, part four. So, so much, so much, so much to share with you guys. Um, but sleep, rest, trying to not put too much on your plate if you can help it is all gonna significantly help with replenishing your energy. If you're constantly on the go, if you're last on your priority list and you're always putting everyone else first, there's mindset and emotional work to do. There's people pleasing, insecurity, perfection, like I said, and that will fuel and amplify exhaustion. It's like adding gas to a fire. It's just going to fan it and make it a lot worse. And that's why there's always emotional work to do. So in the physical, we've got get your hormones tested, get your vitamin and nutrient deficiencies tested, hydration, reducing caffeine or anything really stimulating, you know, making adjustments worth the workout routine, the sleep, the hydration, the eating regularly through the day. Then if we shift to the emotional side of all of this, it's like if you're struggling, like I said earlier, with binge eating, emotional eating, food addiction, binge purge, like get support to overcome those self-sabotaging behaviors because they're going to keep draining your energy. If you want to connect and talk about working together on this, Body Freedom Consultation link is below. You fill out a form, you book your time. We connect for 30 minutes on Zoom and talk really about what you're struggling with, what your goals are, what's holding you back and why a different approach might be exactly what you need to get where you wanna go this time. So all those details are below. If you do wanna connect on that, I'm happy to do so. This is a safe space, no shame in the game. Sometimes we just, you know, we need to find the right person to talk to and get help from. But there's that whole self-sabotage component. And then there's the stress component and not knowing how to manage stress or cope with stress in healthy ways. A lot of us suppress our emotions. We're afraid to feel. We don't have time to feel. It's too uncomfortable. But when we hold everything inside, that just overwhelms your nervous system. And then your amygdala, which is the fight or flight center of the brain, just keeps flooding cortisol and adrenaline through your body. So having a powerful self-care practice is really important to help regulate your nervous system and replenish and fill up your cup. And that's gonna look different for everybody, but I have a very slow morning and a wonderful morning routine that really supports my nervous system. And I try to stick to my tech boundaries through the day, especially after I'm complete of my day of my work. And then I try to really disconnect from everything in the evenings, easier said than done sometimes. I'm human too, I have to reset those boundaries. It's really important because I need, my body needs time away from the stimulation from the bright screens and the EMFs and all that kind of stuff. So tech boundaries, right? Getting honest with yourself if you're afraid to feel or you suck at processing through stress or you don't know how, right? Or that if you feel resistant to starting a self-care practice or routine, right? Like to me, meditation, breath work, journaling, walks, getting out in nature, restorative yoga, gentle stretching, um, EFT tapping, which by the way, if you all want a video, like a five to four or five minute video, it might even be three minutes. I don't know. It'll be short though on tapping on stress and overwhelm. And I can walk you through how to do it, how it works, why it works. It's great for regulating the nervous system. Leave a comment below. Tell me, yes, I want that in the comments, because the more I hear from you, the more it's going to help me direct some of the things that I create, but this could be really powerful for you. And it can take you out of fight or flight back into that rest and digest in just a few minutes. And that's going to help your cortisol regulate. It's going to help your energy replenish and help clear some of that exhaustion and stress. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment below. Let me know you're interested in the tapping video and I will take some time and prepare one for you. It's such a powerful tool and you can come back and use it as many times as you want. But we need to build a self-care practice, stress management, get comfortable feeling our feelings and expressing our emotions. Part of the buildup fuels exhaustion, overwhelms our nervous system. So the more we can regulate, process, let go of what doesn't serve us anymore, um, you know, this all helps us improve our energy levels. Now, I was a, I was a chronic people pleaser. I said yes to everyone else to know myself. So I had to work on that over a few years, learn how to set healthy boundaries with my schedule, saying no when it was a no and I really didn't want to do something that I could cancel or reschedule, right? If I honestly, innocently overdid it and overbooked myself and that most people would be forgiving and understanding if there's someone who wasn't, 
maybe they weren't the right friend or whatever to continue to have around, but boundaries were a very important emotional part. Um, I think that overcoming people pleasing imperfection and learning to have some level of balance in our lives where we have some structure to have time to take care of ourselves is extremely important because friendly reminder, your body isn't a robot. You don't put sun in a Ferrari. Why are we treating our bodies like robots? Your, your, your body is this divine vessel that you get to live this human life in, right? Take care of your body. If you're pissed off at your body because things aren't going the way you want them to, like, what are you ignoring and not doing for yourself? It's, we have to ask the hard questions and, and get honest with ourselves. And sometimes I know that can be hard, but that's really important. And so I learned to set boundaries in my schedule and with others. And that made a big difference. I think we also have to process and forgive and let go of things from the past. Cause the more grudges we hold, the more stuff we hang on to, it just stresses out the nervous system. So this is where the emotional work comes in. Self-forgiveness, building self-worth. That was a huge thing I worked through over a few years in my early twenties after I healed my food addiction and ditching diets, ditching, needing to chase the scale, right? Going by how the way the clothes fit, how you feel. Um, I think that making peace with your body and food and building self-love and acceptance are so powerful. And the irony of it is as you do that, you'll go to your natural set point so much easier without needing to diet or do forceful exercise. You'll do what feels good for you and you don't have to restrict and cut a bunch of stuff out, right? To me, that's the ultimate. We get to have it all. But building this body love and this self-love and really learning how to honor and nurture ourselves is extremely important. It's extremely important. If you feel resistance to that, you're like, that whatever, that doesn't blah, blah, blah. It's like, well... Is what you're doing working? Because if it's not, then maybe it's time to open up and consider that this may be something that could be really helpful for you. But the more I build my worth, the more my power I feel, the less willing I am to self-sabotage with like overbooking or people pleasing because my adrenals don't want any more stress. My body wants rest and I want to listen to that. And the last piece is the emotional empath. So I'm very sensitive empath, right? So when you feel other people's emotions, you feel a collective energy, um, you hang out with someone and then you take their emotions on or whatever the things are like you're an empath. And so learning how to have really solid energetic boundaries, solid energy hygiene routines to learn how to tap in and go like, is what I'm feeling right now mine or is it the collective and it's not even mine? Like, how do I deal with that? And I'm going to talk more about empath and all of that. So if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment below and share with me. Are you an empath? Are you sensitive to energy? Because if you don't know how to manage this, trust me, I know it will drain the crap out of you. And so I've really learned energetic boundaries, energy hygiene, energy management, because otherwise exhaustion just happens a lot more easily. So we see how there's these physical, emotional, and energetic components to work on. And so as you're hearing me go through this, it wasn't just one thing. There is all these layers to work on. So I'm curious to hear from you. What are you currently working on to deal with exhaustion or extreme fatigue? I'm, I'm curious now after watching this, like what is the step you're going to take? Leave a comment below. Let me know. And if you have any questions about anything I've tried or done, I'm happy to, you know, reply to you in the comments or answer it in a new video or a short to just help give more of an explanation. So I'm curious to hear from you. What is the takeaway from today? Leave it below. Like I said earlier, friendly reminder to subscribe and like this video if you're loving what you're hearing. And of course, linked below as a friendly reminder is the body freedom consultation, which is complimentary, as well as the free emotional eating quiz. And if you want to come and learn more about emotional eating, the top emotional eating triggers, why we self-sabotage and why you're still stuck in the behavior, there's still time to come and sign up for the free Understanding Emotional Eating Masterclass. The link is in the description below. There's so much here to help you on your journey. So I look forward to connecting with you in whatever way you desire to come forth. Otherwise, what is one thing you're going to do this week? Let's set an intention. What is one intention you're going to set? One thing you're going to work on to help fill up your cup and take a step forward into better energy and leave more of that fatigue behind you, okay? I know mine for me this week, it's like really honoring my tech boundaries, not sneaking on to see where my YouTube stats are at or like all the other stuff because it can get kind of distracting and then I feel drained. So thank you again for joining me. Subscribe and I cannot wait to share the next video with you all and stay tuned because I may drop a tapping video on stress and overwhelm and how to overcome it if that's something that I get some, some thumbs up or some yeses on in the comments. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Take care.